Welcome back. You're still into the beam and we're with Hamzat Lawal and we've been discussing, you know, the recently concluded election in Edo State. And we're now into the place where we're asking the question of how much has technology played a role and where are we going from here? Uh, Mr. Hamzat, you were speaking about the IREV, something very critical about the IREV. Let's take it from there. Yes, we must comment INEC on this game changer innovation. And if you can see IRF function optimally, the beavers and IRF function optimally in the outcome of this Edo election, informing that outcome. You know, even uh, the day of election, uh, over 90% of uh, results were already on the IRF. So we must commend INEC and we hope that they can build on that as they go to other off cycle election and as we go into 2027 election. Now, why can't we build a system leveraging on this to ensure that this result, as we upload them, they automatically tally. Mm. Because you see, what we're trying to do is use technology to rebuild back trust, gain confidence, so that people can start trusting public institutions like INEC. Mind you, before you have a government in place, this is the process that brings about the government. Sorry, Go ahead. about that. Yeah. This is a process that brings about the government. So if the citizens see that this process is flawless, this process has integrity, then people would even support the government of the day. So what we're saying is how can we integrate technology holistically, whereby uh, as results are being uploaded on IREM from through the beavers, can't it be tallied automatically and have a dashboard, a public dashboard? Because in America, when they have their presidential election, everybody will see the results as they're trickling down from every state. You would see red and blue. Mm. Uh, and, and you know who is already leading even before the uh, electoral umpire come and announce the winner. Why can't we have that? And I'm sure if we have that, we will not have the case where, as you can see, this is something that would have heated the quality where a sitting governor that belongs to a party who was in Benin in support of one of the candidates and the party came on national television to roll out results. Mm by saying he's trying to inform the public. If we had a platform, a dashboard that is public, where everybody can plug into, where channels can show the world that this is who is needed, and this is, uh, uh, you know, result on the ground. Why do we need to have local government coalition center, what a local government coalition center? Mm. Why can't we just go from the polling units? And upload. It's dashboard uploaded and automatically tallied. So people see it, people trust it, and then people support it. Because technology is here to bridge the gap, to build back trust, and ensure that we strengthen our very emerging uh, democracy that we hope to be strong. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so in, in going on to further strengthen this uh, discussion, I, I, I would like to ask, looking at what you have observed from this election, is it enough to start making certain predictions for what the future of you know polls and elections in nigeria would look like is it is it enough to project some people are saying that uh, with what they're seeing there's still so many dark gray areas uh, is does it does it cast a speck of of gloom on elections in the future you see it's more than enough to predict you see as a political scientist you look at trends you look at history where we're coming from where we are where we want to go and this trend are very obvious and no, I'm optimistic. Nothing casts any doom. Uh, because you see, politics is very real. And it's not about propaganda or sentiment. Mm. Politics is what it is when you're on the field and when you practice it. So for me, I'm optimistic. We can get it right. If we agree as a society, when I say society, I'm talking about all the other elements of society, uh, business society, political society, media society, civil society, the electorate themselves. Because what we are, current dreams, we are all of us were deceiving ourselves. Because when you go into an election and there are compromises, then you also want the system. Why would you want to compromise the electoral process for your own personal gain? You know, that is even supposed to be a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. And I hope that the Nigerian police will live up to expectation and rise because you, did, you don't need a petition to even have a criminal fight against someone who would drill out results on national television when the process is still ongoing. So be as it may, I believe that this trend would inform future elections. And as 
a student of politics and history who are documenting, who are analyzing, but this would also inform what becomes of the future. Yes, you know, everybody would always say it's hand of God in Nigeria's politics. But I think we should leave God to rest in heaven. He has already given us everything it took, or everything it takes to fix Nigeria. You know, so I believe each and every one of us have a role to play, and let's start fixing the country. But as we fix the country, we must fix politics first. That is why I think we must all go back to the grassroots, join political parties, attend world meetings, attend local government meetings, and inform what becomes of the political structures. But again, what is our ideals? You know, what is that thing that is uniting us and bringing us together? You know, Democrats and Republicans, you know, they all have a very clear distinction ideas mm. you know as ruling party as opposition as different forces or political movement what is that thing that we bring us together what is our values you know what identity do we want to associate ourselves with what is our vision for this country you know uh, uh, the, the, you know the famous man did not just bring his country to where it is today no there was an identity there was a vision there was principles that brought everybody together, and then everyone works together. You know, politics, like they say, is as much as politics is about power. But it's also about creating power, because this power we talk about, it's about people coming together to create this power. Yeah. And then when you create power, then you share power. But one thing that is missing in Nigeria's political struggle and power sharing is, it is not inclusive. You know, you have power that when you look at people with disabilities and you look at women and you look at youth, you tell them, go away to your tongue. When mm -hmm. you look at them and you think they're part of the problem, not part of the solution, uh, not as partners, then that becomes pro a problematic. And you cannot eliminate over 60% of the population. And that is my strong case. All right. You know, let's create power, share this power, and ensure that it is inclusion. Inclusion is fair and it brings about justice and equity. All right. Finally, for me, in just one minute, what will be your key take? You know, what are your what are your key take, and what will be your reforms that you think you want to see uh, before the next major election comes uh, on the way? What will be your key take from this election in Edo State, and what will be that kind of maybe a reform, a political reform, an electoral reform, something you want to see uh, before the next uh, major poll comes on the way? I think one major reform I want to see is how. Nobody interferes with the INEX constitutional mandate and vote. Because what we've seen and the trend that is building of these people in political class and politicians trying to interfere. The reform we need to see is ensuring that INEC is truly independent without any favor or fear and no interference. And I think the 11th National Assembly can make history. You know, and I think civil society are documenting all these lessons and we would approach the National Assembly on what amendment needs to be made. But most importantly, how can we operationalize it? Because we cannot say INEC has independence and someone back there is still pulling the strings.